Many people like to start the day with a glass of Dexel, Salvital, Eno, or some other health salts. Right, they say it improves their indigestion. It gives them a good start to the day. I just think it's fun to watch. Have a look at this. Put some water in the glass, and then we'll add a teaspoon of health salts to that and see what happens. You've seen this many times before, haven't you? Good, healthy-sized teaspoon. There we go. Look at that. Bubbles come flying up the, the glass, bubbling over the top, maybe. Some gas is being produced. The gas is actually carbon dioxide. Have a look at this. If I strike a match and lower it down into the carbon dioxide, which is still sitting there, what happens? The flame goes out. Carbon dioxide is a very good fire extinguisher, and in fact, it's used in some fire extinguishers. I thought it would be fun to see if we could make one, one that you can make at home, at the kitchen sink, using a few simple things that you have already in the kitchen. And one of those, you've guessed it, is health salts. Okay, you start by making a little parcel of health salts. You take a paper tissue, you don't need a whole paper tissue, actually about a quarter of paper tissue is all you need. And then place a little mound of health salts right in the centre. There we go. And then using a piece of cotton thread, you tie that parcel, the corners of the parcel together so that it makes a little bundle like that piece of cotton thread around there, tie a knot on it, you've guessed it, I've already done that part, and there's my little bundle of health salts, ready to go into our homemade fire extinguisher. To house it, we're going to use an empty bottle, this is from fruit juice, and that's going to hang down in there. What does it react with? Well, you've already seen that. Health salts react with water to produce carbon dioxide, so the first thing we must do is to place water in to our little bottle, to about the halfway mark. There we are. Now, this next bit is most important. With another piece of tissue, wipe around the mouth of the fruit juice bottle. There we are, to make sure that it's absolutely dry. Now, lower the little bundle into the bottle. Of course, nothing's happening because the health salts are not coming into contact with the water yet. Dangle it down so it's just above the surface of the water. And now, take the screw top lid and place it in position so that it holds onto the cotton thread and suspends the little bundle in that position there. Cut away the surplus cotton thread and you have a fire extinguisher ready to go. Now nothing will happen until we do what with it? Have you worked it out? Exactly. We need to turn the whole thing upside down. When we do that, the water will soak through the paper tissue. The health salts in the water will interact with each other. They'll form carbon dioxide, bubbles of carbon dioxide. There'll be a pressure built up. Maybe we'll be able to force some water and bubbles of carbon dioxide through the tiny little hole that I've placed in the top of the lid. Can you see that? And I placed that in there with a nail by just hammering a small nail through that before we started. OK, time for the big test. All we do is tip it upside down. Oh, I have a candle flame here. We'll see if we can put that out with our homemade fire extinguisher. Five, four, three, two, one. Tip it upside down and the reaction starts. And look at that. The candle's well and truly out. OK, it worked. You might say, I wonder if anybody's ever thought of using that sort of reaction in a real fire extinguisher. They certainly have. In fact, this sort of fire extinguisher, which is not used very much anymore, it's called a soda acid fire extinguisher. And it has inside it something a bit like health salts, sodium carbonate, and it has a, an acid in there as well. But the two are kept separate. Until you turn the whole thing upside down, then the reaction starts and out comes water and bubbles of carbon dioxide. I'm not going to do that now. In fact, it's an offence to set off a fire extinguisher unless, unless there's a real fire around. Well, I have permission from the fire brigade to use this next one. It uses the same material, carbon dioxide, but in this case, the carbon dioxide is already made and it's stored under pressure in the cylinder. All I need to do to release it is to direct this hose and funnel towards the flame and squeeze that handle. Well, I think I'll stand back a bit. We have another candle flame there to extinguish. Let's see if it works. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Well, it certainly did the job well, didn't it? And that'll put out much larger fires as well. So that's a little bit about carbon dioxide, a very useful material in fire extinguishers.